All right, so there's a lot going on. Um, I don't know if you guys followed on Twitter, but we showed that we are going to be moving into a new studio here very, very soon, a much larger space. We're building it out, as people are calling it, Jay's Check Tips, because apparently I'm copying Linus by making a studio. But whatever, I, I digress, that's besides the point. We should all copy the greats, right? But no, um, I started taking this system apart because these are not my components. See, these belong to someone else with the exception of the reservoir. I need to, to get that back because that's gonna be used in the AMD build we're doing with the Radeon 7 build. But I thought, has anyone ever actually demonstrated how to take a computer apart? Like how to unbuild one? Rule the games from the Seven Kingdoms with your Iron Claw Mouse from your Iron Throne. It has a scroll wheel that looks like an off-road tire and buttons on the side and top to do stuff. Don't lose grip while doing stuff with the textured sides and do it in style with the RGB. And now comes available in wired and wireless. Learn more at Corsair.com. I see messages all the time from people telling me, hey, I inherited a PC. I was given one by my friend or whatever. And I uh, felt Phil's even does that. Phil's even provided computers to his friends who were like, thanks. I have a console. I have no idea what I'm doing with this. So rather than pick this up from the perspective of I'm building a new computer from scratch, how about we take it from the perspective of you received an old computer you want to upgrade or rebuild or just take the parts out of and you don't know a damn thing about computers. And we're gonna we're gonna help you now figure out how to take something apart. We took that panel off already and you want to take off both side panels. Your case is probably gonna have some knobs you gotta turn, take the screws out. And this is gonna give you access to all the wiring on the back and obviously on the front. Now we're gonna at least pretend for the sake of this video that you know what the components are. So I'm not gonna go into detail on them, but I will point them out. This is your heat sink for your CPU. If you have a water cooler or an AIO, it's gonna be very similar, actually easier to take apart than these usually. This is your graphics card. Everything's plugged into the motherboard. These things sticking up is your RAM or your memory. And then you have your power connectors, which is gonna be a 24 pin usually on the right, a CPU power pin, usually a four or eight pin at the top. You're gonna to have your PCI Express hooked up to your graphics card if it uses it, otherwise it may not have power connected at all. There might be one plug, two plugs, or even three plugs. And then you have on the bottom right here, your front panel connectors. These are the wires that tell your reset button, your switch, or in our case, our kill switch, um, that we're pushing buttons, those plug into the motherboard. And then you're gonna also have Usually, which are over here on the right-hand side, your hard drive SATA connectors, which are what your hard drives can communicate with your motherboard with. And then this thing down here in the bottom uh, that's usually big and square is your power supply. So what I like to do is kind of unplug the power cables. So one of the last things I do when I build a computer is actually plug in all of the power. Oh, and then this big fat flat guy right here, this is our USB 3.0. It's usually on the right side of the motherboard or the bottom. Now, if you're gonna be just updating or upgrading your system by changing out the graphics card or the CPU or whatever, you wouldn't really need to unplug any of the stuff I'm unplugging here. You would just wanna unplug, obviously, power from the system. But this is from the perspective of we are taking this all apart. Now, you're gonna have at least one, maybe two screws that are holding it into the chassis itself. Unplug the power, which we already did. And what you're gonna see is in the back, this one happens to be white, it's a little push tab to push it down to release the lock in the back of the a graphics card to keep it from coming out. It might also be one that you have to squeeze. It might be one you have to kind of move out of the way. It might be one that slides. There's like three or four different mechanisms for that. Once you do that, just kind of wiggle it back and forth and it comes straight out. So what happens is it locks into this little hook right here that keeps it from coming out. So the next thing I'm gonna take off here is my RAM. I think I'm gonna remove the CPU cooler with the motherboard when we take that out. So it's just like the graphics card here, a different shape tab, but we've got these two tabs uh, that hold either side. Your motherboard might only have one little snap release with one side that doesn't move at all. It's the same process for both. Just remove the, or push down the tabs that actually move. So we're gonna push that one down, push that one down. And as you do that, the RAM kind of gets unseated. So you wanna make sure that it doesn't just fall out. When I do the top, I like to kind of hold it with these two fingers so it doesn't fall out. Let me push that down. So if you were adding another hard drive, you would need to plug in a SATA cable here. But since we are unbuilding this computer, we are going to unhook these SATA cables. And the way to get these out is you see these little metal tabs. Those are what sort of lock it in place so they don't accidentally fall out. Not all SATA cables have that. 
this, these actually do. So I'm just kind of grabbing that wire from behind right here, pushing that tab down and pulling back. Now this is actually something that comes in handy as well. Speaking of use case, let's say you're gonna reuse all these components, but you got a really old, ugly case. Like, here I have an example. So here's an example. Let's say the components that were in here were decent, like we have here. This is an FX8320, not a bad system. You could still game on it, but this case is really ugly. So you could do the method we're using here by showing you how to remove everything to move it to another case. Then you would just have to watch our other video on how to build a computer to know how to put it all back together. So the next thing I'm gonna do here is since this fan will allow us to do it, or this cooler, I'm gonna go ahead and just take this fan off because I didn't have this one, like it's not wired to the cooler itself. And I just want the room. So we can take the fan out of here, get a little bit extra room, and now we can easily access our screws. So we're gonna go ahead and remove our motherboard. And to do that, I'm gonna lay it flat but you can see right here that there are perimeter screws. I'm actually missing one right there. But there are usually gonna be one, two, three screws on the bottom, potentially one or two right here. I didn't put any there. We're gonna have one in the middle. In this case, it's a dimple that just sort of holds on to the motherboard. There's no screw in that one. A screw here, and then again, just mirrored from the bottom, across the top, you're gonna have three of them. So just unscrew these. Do it with the case flat. That way you don't accidentally drop the motherboard out of there. A lot of sensitive materials on the surface of the motherboard. Um, capacitors, a lot of solder points. Um, there's even chips and stuff on there so you don't wanna damage it by having it fall out and land on something sharp. So obviously you wanna keep a hold of all your screws and stuff, you might need them later. Um, some of them are still sitting on the motherboard here. When we lift it out, they'll come up with it. Now I like to kind of grab it by the, the cooling tower because that makes a pretty good handle. It's definitely sturdy enough. It's easier than grabbing it by the heat sinks. You don't wanna grab and pull up by the heat sinks, and I'll tell you why. A lot of these are just mounted with spring-loaded screws, and then they have thermal paste or thermal pads that touch the thing they're cooling. If you pull them up and it's too heavy, you kind of crack that or it breaks that bond, then it could also affect the cooling of those parts. So I'd much rather grab it by the cooling tower here, which I know can handle the weight of the motherboard. We are gonna go ahead and just lift this out. So what you might have to do, depending on your case, you might have to sort of lift up kind of at an angle. In this particular chassis, I've gotta go sideways and then come straight up. And then there is our motherboard. Now we're gonna go ahead and set this aside because now we have to remove our power supply. Now before we undo all of our wiring here, you can see we have Velcro straps to undo because that's kind of holding things down and out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and take out our SSD. So as you can see here, we have a Samsung drive and this is gonna unplug just like we did on the motherboard. The power connector though, be careful with it. It's long and got a lot of leverage. If you were to tweak this sideways, you could snap the power cable right or connector right off inside the, the connector from the SSD. So you don't wanna do that. When you take it out, hold the SSD firm and then wiggle side to side, and then that will come out. This uh, easily can snap off inside of that plug, then making your SSD not completely useless, but much more prone to shorting out those, and you don't wanna deal with that. So set that aside, and then undo any zip ties or Velcro that's holding down any of your cables. If the person who built your computer is even slightly any sort of a PC enthusiast, it's probably gonna have cable ties and stuff on there. Now this case is a little different when it comes to the power supply. It's got this plate that the power supply mounts to via these four screws, and then the power supply slides out the rear. Your case may not have that. It may just have these screws, which means then the power supply has to come out from the side of the case. So perfect example on this old chassis, it, it, this power supply would not come out the rear, it would come out the side because it just mounts directly to the frame itself. So as I pull it here, you can see we've got wires kind of getting hung up on things all over the place. So don't just yank on it, you could break things, especially if you plan on reusing this case for something else. So what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna sort of undo this bit of spaghetti so that I can see what our wires are getting hooked up on. Like I have a RGB controller here, SATA cable there. So our 24 pin is what was getting caught up. Now that our cables on the power supply are free, we can go ahead and pull it out this way. If you're gonna be taking the fans out and using them in your next uh, build, then you will remove the, the four plastic self-tapping screws that screw right into the plastic chassis of the, of the fan, the frame of the fan. You would remove all four of these and then your fan will come out. 
So whether you're gonna reuse this chassis or not, it's always kind of nice to get it sort of prepared and ready for the next build, or the, maybe this is a perfect enclosure for you to give to a friend or something. There's a lot of that going around lately, which is kind of cool. So I just wanna kind of bundle up all the wires here, get them sort of, I guess, sort of some logic to it, if that makes sense, so that we can put the panel covers back on on either side of the chassis and not pinch wires, because then if we were to cut a wire for let's say the front power or the reset or something like that, then you're gonna have to kind of refer to my kill switch video on how to sort of repair that harness because it would be the exact same logic. So basically this chassis is completely back to normal. The exception of the fact that it has a kill switch and it has a 12 volt gauge and it has two fans still in the front because we don't need those fans. So what's left now is to talk about removing the cooler and getting the C, uh, CPU out of there, which in this case is an AMD FX 8320. Now removing the AMD cooler in my pin is a little bit more of a pain in the ass than the Intel, because as you can see, it's much more rectangular in the mount design, and AM3 uh, and AM4 are very similar. They're only a few millimeters different. Whereas Intel is a perfect square, so these mounts actually are wider, which makes it easier to get to without the heat sink tower itself getting in the way. So that's one of the reasons why we removed the fan, because if the fan were still on here, then you can see that we wouldn't even have a chance of getting to those particular screws. And that's why I wait until it's out of the case. Hopefully, you know, if you're upgrading just your cooler, then you could do this in the case, but it's a lot harder, trust me. Fortunately, we have a little bit of flex on this. These are four Phillips head, but also they are a nut. I think they're a 10 millimeter, if I'm not mistaken. I've already kind of sort of loosened these up with the screwdriver, and then I can do it by hand. But as you can see, I've got this kind of a crazy angle I have to go into. But because they're spring-loaded, they do have a little bit of flex in them, so I can get the right angle to get the screwdriver on there. And then we can loosen these up. Now these are sort of spring-loaded, as you can see, so that's gonna hold down the tension on the cooler so we get a good spread with our thermal paste and stuff. But I don't want you to take the cooler straight off yet, because I'm gonna show you a common mistake people make with AMD CPUs, which really tends to freak them out. Now this cooler's been on here for a long time. I'm hoping I can demonstrate this. A lot of people will just grab it and go, yay. Okay, that one didn't do it. They'll pull it up and their CPU is attached to it. And it yanked it right out of the socket. Now, fortunately with AMD, that's not really that big of an issue because the way AMD works is they're not LGA, which means that the pins are on the CPU and not on the socket. So if you undo this little lever here and lift it up, it's got kind of a little tab that it clicks in, listen. So you can un, you push it out and go up. But as you can see right here, it's actually stuck in there really good, holy crap, there we go. The pins are located on the AMD CPU. So if this were an Intel CPU, that'd be flat with a bunch of little like gold pads, which would touch pins sticking up on the socket. In my opinion, this is a much more beginner friendly setup because this is a lot easier. These pins are actually fairly strong compared to the LGA pins found on the socket itself. And so this is a lot easier to deal with. So what I recommend is when you go to take it out, instead of pulling straight up, twist it a little to break any seal or any sort of bond that could be there. And then you can pull it up and the CPU should still be in there. So now what you got to do is you've got to clean your CPU and your cooler. Cause if you're going to put this stuff away, you don't want to do it with thermal paste everywhere. It gets everywhere. It's gross. I hate thermal paste. Nothing puts me in a salty mood like thermal paste in internet comments. What about internet Who comments else? about thermal oh. paste? <laughs> Now I'm gonna be using paper towels for this, but a really good material to use is coffee filters because it's a lot less fibrous. We're also gonna be using 91% um, isopropyl alcohol. You can get 97, which is probably a little bit better. But grab your CPU from the edges, and then you wanna take where it's wet with the, with the alcohol, and as you can see, it just sort of eats right through the thermal paste. So you just wanna make sure you get all the thermal paste off. You might wanna use a Q-tip if it's kinda of caked up on there. Just be careful as you're holding it that you don't squish any of the pins because then you'll be watching my video on how to restraighten AMD pins. So here is an exploded view of all the components inside of a computer. This is everything we just removed. Don't confuse this with a view of an exploded computer. That's a whole different video we did back in the day. I've blown up plenty of computers on this channel, but that's why we do this sort of stuff so that you don't make mistakes and potentially blow up your stuff. Now taking it apart is a lot easier than putting it together because all the components are already there. They're in the place they go. All you have to do is take it out and put it back in their boxes if you've got it or transfer it to a new chassis like we sort of demonstrated we would be doing. 
But I, I, I know, I hear you guys like, Jay, this is a really weird video. We've, you've got 2 million people following you. We're all smart. We know what we're doing. Why are you showing us this? Well, if you saw my messages in my inbox from my perspective, you'd realize just how many people are watching or are passers-by asking questions because they have no idea where to start. They either got me a hand-me-down or a, a, an old computer from a friend or family member and they want to mess around with it, but they don't want to ruin it either. So that was sort of the perspective we took from this video content, or this piece of content was from the perspective of working backwards. So if you guys found this video useful or you know someone who could find this video useful, why don't you go ahead and share it and tag them in this video. Maybe they'll learn something, which is the whole point of why I've been doing this now for almost seven years and two million subscribers strong. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. And soon it will be from a whole new studio. But I'm thinking about recreating this set one-to-one -one in the new studio so it looks like nothing changed. Except we'd actually have to green screen. Then we'd have to actually make <laughs> fake windows, yeah, yeah, which would be so ironic. But anyway, that's besides the point. That perspective. Uh. We're literally sitting here waiting to shoot our next scene because we're hearing this. There's more than one truck going backwards and outside. Then, There's the someone hammering, hammering <laughs> next door. The neighbor is like sliding furniture across the floor. I've seen a lot of, why are you getting a new studio? What's wrong with your current one? With the exception of space, noise pollution.